just got back from Cabela's. I've been doing a lot of research on gun bluing and decided that I wanted to take on this project. It's something that I've never done before and I've uh, been doing a lot of research online, watched a lot of different YouTube videos trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do. After reading all the reviews on the different types of bluing and the, the costs associated and all that, I decided to go with the Birchwood Casey Permablue. Uh, it seemed to be the best bang for the buck. Uh, many people seem to be getting good results out of it. There are some negative comments out there, but uh, I'm just not quite sure. So I decided to give it a try. Basically, I'm, uh, I've got an old revolver that I was given last year. This, uh, let's take this out of the way. It's a Colt Official Police, and it's got some areas on it. You can kind of see some of the areas on it. Uh, over here, I, I already started taking a little bit of steel wool to the corrosion. There was some pitting corrosion there. There's a bit of pitting corrosion here up on the uh, forward sight and the muzzle, on both sides of the muzzle, a little bit of pitting. So I wanted to get that cleared up. And a little bit up here, there's just little areas all over. It's been around. This thing is, a, my understanding, it's a 1929 model. Uh, my uncle picked it up in 1964, I believe he said, from a police officer's guild in California. But I decided this would be a good project gun after I started looking into it. I found out that it's not, uh, it doesn't have a huge amount of value to it. So I figured you know, this might be a good project gun. It's a nice piece of history and I can, you know, work on it as far as a, uh, a bluing project goes. And the grips, I'll probably be looking to get some new grips. These are uh, presumably the original grips, wood grips, but as you can see there's a lot of wear here. Not quite as much on this side, so it's most likely a right-handed shooter. Most of the time, but I'll, I'll do a separate review on this gun. But this is the one that I'm going to be doing the uh, bluing project for, and we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to take it step by step. Okay, here's what we've got. After I unpack the package to see everything that's in it, uh, we have the, the blue and rust remover, cleaner and degreaser, and the perma blue uh, solutions that we'll be using. Came with a few swabs here, some 400 grit sandpaper, what looks like a little piece of uh, a dinner napkin or something for cleaning up, apparently, a foam. Uh, this is a foam applicator, some steel wool, and these uh, barricade rust protection, uh, it says rust protection for firearms, take along gun cloth for wiping it down in the end. Uh, of course the instructions, in this case, uh, I'm a typical guy, I don't usually use instructions, but I think for this, uh, this program I will be using the instructions faithfully because I don't know what I'm doing here. They even throw in a, uh, a target for going out and having some fun with after we're all done with the program. So anyway, that's what's included in the kit. Just wanted to share that just before I get started. Okay, the first step here with the Colt Official Police is going to be removing the cylinder. So when that's done, let's see if we can get this thing to focus here. That's done with this screw right here, so we'll go ahead and take that out. Taking this screw out raises that little pin next to it. Pull that thing out of there. Come on. Screws out, the pins out, zoom it out here, and then we can take the cylinder out and pull it forward there. So now we have the cylinder out separate from the frame. Next we'll go ahead and take off the wooden grips. Okay, the grips are now off. Okay, next I'm going to take apart the, uh, I'm going to take this plate off of the frame here to expose the uh, trigger and the hammer assembly so I can get all the parts out and get them uh, degreased. It's going to be kind of hard to do it if it was all put together. I've never taken this apart before, so this will be the first time I've done this part here. Again, like I said, it's a project gun, so if something goes horribly wrong, I end up taking it to a gunsmith and have them fix it and sort it out for me, but uh, let's see if we can get that loose there. There we go, it's coming loose. Is that right? coming out? And okay, it's a little stubborn, there it comes, I think. Come on, work it, there we go. So I got that out now. So yeah, a little bit of oil and lube in there, as I would expect. And then uh, there's the insides right there. So I'll be pulling out the uh, trigger and hammer assembly next. 
So let's pull that. Again, I haven't done this before, so let's see what. Don't want things springing out on me. And I don't know the names of these parts that I'm pulling out of here, so that part we'll have to leave to some experts out there that uh, know what they're looking at. Okay, after further inspection, it looks like I, there's no real need to disassemble in there. So what I did is uh, I just cleaned it up a little bit, uh, got most of the, the oil and grease out of it for now. I'm going to leave it off to do the bluing so I can make sure and get in, in all the areas before I put the, the uh, cover of the frame back on there. But there is definitely not a need to disassemble it any further than this at this point. So I'm going to go on to uh, the cleaning, degreasing it, and uh, work through that problem. Okay, so the first step uh, says removing old bluing and rust is a necessary step before rebluing or browning. First, after removing the stock forearm and trigger assembly, which they're talking about a long gun here, clean all metal surfaces with a saturated sponge of cleaner, degreaser, and rinse thoroughly with water. So I'm going to take the uh, cleaner degreaser here and I guess I need to pop it open. Would have been nice to do that before I put the gloves on. Let me get that popped off there. Okay. Get that foil off of there. Okay, now we'll saturate the sponge. I don't know how much they want. So we'll see here. And then I'll start with this small piece here. Work it in. One thing they didn't include in the kit was some rubber gloves, and they do show pictures of the person in the uh, instructions wearing rubber gloves, so I figure it's best to be safe. I don't know how caustic this stuff is, but it doesn't have you know, it doesn't have much of a smell to it so far. This is just the cleaner and degreaser, so we'll see. As with any process like this, and the instructions reiterate this, that the prep work and the cleaning is the most important part to getting a a good desired finish. So I'm definitely going to take my time on all the parts here and uh, we'll, I'm not going to leave all that on video of course. I can uh, speed it up here a little bit and cut, cut to the chase when I get to the next step. But this is step one right now. Cleaning and degreasing. Okay, step two is to apply the blue and rust remover. It says to apply it with a saturated swab and allow it to work for two minutes. With a small pad of steel wool dampened with blue and rust remover, polish the metal lightly to remove old bluing and loosened rust. Continue this process until the metal is gleaming. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process on uh, the cover plate as well. I did take, uh, after rinsing everything with water, I did take my air compressor and, and blast it out so I don't have any pooling water sitting in, the, in there creating any additional corrosion. Put it on, saturate and let it work for two minutes they say. So. This stuff does have a little bit of a smell to it, almost a yeah, a little bit of maybe a little rotten egg smell. Not not as strong, but it's a, a mild rotten egg smell, I guess. Talks about uh, in the book, it keeps re-emphasizing not to rush any of the preparation processes. So I'm just going to say that again because I think that's going to be the key to getting good results here. Again, I've never done this process at all or anything really like it, so this is new to me as well but I do know just from other types of things that I've done in the past, preparation is usually the key. So, okay, now I'm going to get some solution on the steel wool there, and let's see how this bling comes off. Oh yeah, it's starting to get a little splotchy there. And actually, yeah, you can kind of see it in the video, it looks like. It's working its way in, looks like, and this is where we're going to just this is probably going to be the most painstaking part of the process, I'm guessing, to get it off. And especially on the frame, there's just too many little crevices and little areas to get into. So I do expect this part to take quite some time. So definitely not going to put this whole portion of video, but I'll just uh, show different parts of what I'm doing. Still just walking through the process here. Got a little scotch bright out to help with the situation. The steel wool wasn't quite getting some of the areas, so I have some a little bit 
deeper pitting in some of the areas, so I'm just trying to work on that, get it cleaned out. But it's just a just a process, just going through all these things. So I'm just going to continue to walk through it. Okay, I finished the blue and rust remover, and this is what we're left with. I am starting to see some gold tinging on here. It was as I was polishing it up with the steel wool, it was looking nice and shiny. But <clears throat> excuse me, after the rinse, and then. It says to reapply the cleaner degreaser and scrub it off and rinse it off again. This is what it looks like. So I'm hoping that this is the, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping this is what it's supposed to look like. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is start on a couple of the smaller pieces here. Actually, I'm going to start with one piece. I'll just do that one there. And one of the things is to heat it up. So I do have a, a heat gun here. They don't say to heat it up, but uh, online it sounds like that heating it up helps to open the pores of the metal. A little better. So anywhere from 125 to 140 degrees, which is warm to the touch. Let's see my heat gun here. So I'm going to heat it up, and then I'm going to apply the bluing. And it says uh, apply the perma blue with an applicator swab over the entire surface to be blued. Work as quickly as you can, but remember to be thorough. Rather than bluing the entire surface at one time, you may want to divide it into two or three sections. Step two, allow the bluing to stand on the metal for 30 to 60 seconds. No longer, then neutralize the chemical reaction by rinsing immediately and thoroughly with cold water and wipe dry. So, that's a little bit more. So that's what I'll do. I'll start with this one piece here and see if I get a desired result out of that. Okay, so, let's turn that thing off. That won't burn. Okay, so I'm going to take the, uh, the Perma Blue and uh, with a new applicator and it looks like a very clear liquid so I'll put the applicator in there pull it out and start applying it yeah, and instantly we're getting a very dark finish so let's get it on there all the way around yeah, I can see it instantly getting dark so I hope for the uh, sake of this it's going to dark and evenly because right now it's very splotchy. So, hmm, interesting. The part I put it on initially is very dark and the rest not so much. Let's put, just grab a little more of that. That's probably been about 30 seconds or so. So then, uh, Okay, now I guess I'm going to step out here and put uh, rinse it with the cold water. Okay, here I'm back after rinsing it off, so let's go ahead and dry it down. So, out of blue to stand metal, 30 to 60 seconds, no longer, then neutralize the chemical reaction, rinse immediately with thoroughly with cold water and wipe dry. After during rinsing, polish lightly with fine steel wool to blend the color. Praise the bluing for coverage. If streaking exists, or if you desire deeper, darker blue, simply repeat steps one, two, and three until the desired color is obtained. So, it's not looking too bad. It's a little bit splotchy, but uh, I think we're gonna work our way around that. So there we go. There's the, uh, getting the camera view here. Kind of see the finish. It's little uneven in spots so I'm gonna go ahead and do the steel wool and then uh, apply a couple more coats okay the steel wool seems to be taking off a, a light amount of it it's still dark but now you can see the area that was the darkest seems to be the lightest so not quite sure so I'm gonna go ahead and rewarm it up and then I will reapply some more blue Again, they don't talk about warming it up, so hopefully that this is going to help the process and not hinder it. I'll find out after I'll do it a few times here. Okay, so let's apply. Try to apply it a little bit quicker all the way around, see if that makes a difference on it. I don't know.
So this is a chemical conversion process which is actually lightly corroding the surface of the metal which in turn prevents further corrosion down the road. I wasn't familiar with this specific process, however I've been in the aviation industry for many years and that's one of the things we would do with the uh, sheet metal, the aluminum sheet metal, or any, any aluminum parts, we would apply allodyne, which is a chemical conversion coating, which does exactly the same thing that we're doing here. So I'm a bit familiar with the process, just not these chemicals. That's looking a little more even than it was last time. So let that sit for a little bit and then we'll go uh, rinse it off again. Okay, I'm on the third application for the cylinder now. It looked like I put about six applications on the, uh, the cover piece of the frame. Looks pretty decent at this point. But I'm looking at this third one might be enough on the cylinder. It seems to be going on a little bit better. So we'll see how it looks after I do the rinse. Okay, here we are after after the third application and I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It seems pretty even coverage on the cylinder. And I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna use the barricade wipes when that point here comes up shortly, which is the next step, the wipes that come with it. Uh, where's that other piece? So here's here's the other one. There's a little bit of you can kind of see well, when I get right in the light like that, you can kind of see the previous pitting corrosion on there. So I'm not going to be able to really get rid of that, but as far as the coloration on it, the coloration looks pretty even. I might put one more coat on it, or one more application just to see, but the cylinder is looking very good. I'm very happy with that right now. Okay, I've got the, uh, the, the cylinder is looking really good to me. It took about three applications of the bluing to get it to the, the result that I'm looking for, which is a pretty dark and it's black. And then I just went back and redid the, uh, uh, we call it the, the, uh, the shaft. Anyway, I'm going to heat it up now. And actually, I am going to deviate a little bit from the instructions here because I have recently changed my lubrication system. I'm switching over on most of my, or, well, I'm switching over on all of my firearms to uh, frog lube. And I just started using it. And it is a plant-based lubrication as opposed to the petroleum based and since the the barricade product that came with this is a petroleum based I don't want to have to go through later and have it strip it out and move to the frog lube so I'm gonna put the frog lube on at this point in time where I would normally put the barricade and hopefully that will do the same thing uh, have the same result which is protecting the finish and lubricating at the same time so I'm just heating it up because the frog lube comes in a paste format or a liquid, the liquid I just showed a minute ago, and this is, uh, this is the paste here, and I'm going to heat it up just a little bit, just to, I'm out here in the garage, it's a little cool, just heat it up a little bit so when I go to use it, it'll be a little bit easier to apply with the brush. But what I'm going to do is by heating up, it, it heats at a very low melting point, I don't know what the temperature is, but just sitting it out in the sun is plenty to warm it up. So what I'm going to do is take that and I'm going to apply the frog lube to this whole, the whole cylinder now and see if it's going to give me the same result that I would have otherwise gotten with the barricade product that came with the bluing kit. Now since I haven't done it the other way, I don't know if it's going to be the same result, but in the end I'm assuming that if it protects the finish and the finish uh, resists any sort of uh, deterioration, then I'm going to assume it's working the same way. But this way I will be able to get it all lubricated. And there is some rust, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there is definitely rust in the cylinders. It's a well, your typical iron rust in there. So I'm going to get the lube in there and then I'm going to run a uh, brush through the cylinders to get them cleaned out. So I don't want it to sit like this for very long. But right now I'm just going to apply this lube liberally all over all the finishes that I just did and see how it turns out. Another nice thing about the frog lube, which I'm really noticing the benefit of right now, is the smell. It smells, it has kind of a minty smell to it. 
actually quite a pleasant smell, which is a little bit better than these chemicals I've been using for the bluing process. They don't, they don't smell terribly bad, but they're not the nicest smell either. So it's kind of nice getting this minty smell in, in the picture here. So let's push this out. And that'll lubricate the shaft there. But this frog lube works its way into the pores of the metal. Allegedly, like I said, I just started converting my firearms over to it. I saw a demonstration at a local local gun range was having a sort of an open house a couple weeks ago. And there were some people there uh, demonstrating the frog lube and talking about it. And I didn't know much about it, so I came home and did some research on it before I went out and bought it. And everything I can find about it I really like so far. I haven't... Uh, fired any of the firearms that I've put it on, but what it does is it, it goes on, especially this paste, it goes on at a very low melting point, like I was saying, to apply and it gets in all the cracks and crevices, but when it dries, you it dries it back into the paste and then you wipe it off with a soft cloth, so it gives the feeling, the, the final feeling is a slick surface, but it's not wet. So you don't have to run your firearms wet even the ones that somewhat require that. So there we go. So we've got a complete application there. And so what I'm going to do now is just run a bore brush through those bores just to clean them out. The Frog Lube is a CLP product, cleaner, lubricant, and protectant, so it's an all-in-one. And uh, I'm still fairly new to firearms in general, but right now everything I see about it I like. So still learning and experimenting with different things. Another thing to note about the frog lube is that it's recommended that after it's applied that it sits on there for 30 to 60 minutes and then after, by then it'll, like I say, the paste will solidify a little bit and then you just wipe off all of the excess. And then when the gun is back together I will go back with the liquid portion and just lube all the normal lube points that I would normally lube. Okay, now I'm moving on to the main frame. I've got everything else done and it's looking, I'm quite happy with the, the uh, results so far. So I've got the uh, final lube applied to them and they're just going to sit and cure, I guess, so to speak, and while I do the main frame here. Again, they didn't recommend heating it up, but I saw places online that talk about heating up the the metal first, so that's why I'm doing it. So I don't know if the results would be much different if it was cold or not, but uh, I'm I'm happy with the results I'm getting so far. Okay, here's the barrel after three applications. That's what we're looking at so far. It's probably close, maybe maybe one or two more applications, but that's gives sort of the contrast to the rest of the frame. Okay, here we are. It's about I don't know five or six hours since I started the project. A little bit of breaks in between, but. Uh, I've got the bluing pretty much finished. I'm definitely a little bit of surface rust there in the barrel. You can see that, but uh, I'll just clean that as very, very surface before I put it all together when I lube it all up. But overall, the finish is looking pretty good once I get rid of the rust. Actually, that rust shows up quite well in the camera, a lot better than it does to my eye. So anyway, the uh, once I get the surface rust off of it, that's going to be the basic look. I'll get this oiled up with the frog lube and let it sit overnight and then that'll uh, that was the recommendation with the uh, the original instructions so that's what I'm going to go with now the overnight and see what it looks like the other parts here's the the cylinder it's already I put some frog lube on it earlier and I uh, just recently wiped it off and it's not quite as shiny as the original finish but overall it's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with how it's all working. There's still there were some some of the minor pitting you can still see that, but I wasn't able to get all that out. But the finish overall looks pretty good. The camera seems to pick up a lot more of it than than uh, just looking at it here in the light. So it's kind of a good way to look at it for myself, I think. But that's what we've got. Just get some of that minor surface rust off of it, and then that's going to be ready to go. And then tomorrow I will assemble it, put it in the video. Okay, this stuff's been sitting overnight in the lubrication, and now it's time to just wipe it all down and see what kind of finish we've got. 
hopefully the frog lube will give me the same result that I was supposed to get by using the petroleum based product that came in the kit but like I said before I'll never really know because I don't know I haven't done this before and since I didn't do it the other way I don't have anything to compare to it's looking pretty good though I feel it's looking pretty good anyway if I have to go back and do more if I don't like it in the end I think all I have to do is strip off the lubrication and just blue it some more on top of the existing bluing because this kit is sold as a touch up or a complete rebluing solution so I, I'm guessing I should be able to do that I did heat up these parts when I put the frog lube on them as per the recommendations frog lube it helps absorb into the material that way so when I'm finished, it's very smooth, has very smooth surface to it, but it's not wet, not oily. Okay, I've heated up inside and added some final lubrication there, so now I'm going to start to put it back together. It's real close to what the original was. Okay, that's going on there. Okay. Now the bluing, I did not blue the tops of these screws and it looks to match pretty well. Heat it up again so it'll go in there nicely. Now I want to put a little bit of lube inside. And this pin and screw have to be in the right sequence here. I don't know if you can see that. That goes in there. There's a groove that goes in the little pin and this special screw head. Okay, and there we are complete. There it is. It looks like in the, uh, the video the cylinder looks a little lighter than the frame, but in, in real life here it looks the same. So I'm not quite sure how that will turn out on the big screen, but in the viewfinder that's what it's looking like. Still need to run my patch through the barrel. And give it a one more wipe down to get all my fingerprints and everything off of it. But overall it has a pretty uniform finish and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'll get some pictures once I polish it up and put the grips back on. Okay, here we go. Here's the, the finished product. It looks pretty good. I've got uh, another thing to note about that frog lube is it's safe on wood and plastics. It's safe on anything. So it, it uh, gave a little bit of a sheen to the wood grips here that I've got. There's the final product and uh, I'm happy with how it turned out. It's, it's definitely not a factory blue job in the end, but uh, you can tell that it's not a factory job, but it looks very good. I would give it on a, on a scale of one to 10. I would, I'd give it about a nine. There are certain areas that are showing up here, some of the discoloration here, where some of the pitting was, some of the pitting up here shows, but in person they don't show up that much they really just seem to be showing up here in the video quite a bit though but so if you like the looks of it in the video you'd like the looks of it in person and if anybody has any questions obviously go ahead and send me a message or post the comments and uh, let me know if I misstated anything along the way I'm still new to making videos and I'm also somewhat new to firearms so it's all a learning process for me but I'm happy with how it turned out thanks for watching